Oh, hi. Yo, everybody. We are here to blunder and bungle through another kitchen adventure on baking winos. So today, yeah, we are going to be baking, baking, not baking. Well, well you know what? We'll open the oven towards the end of the video. Well, so then we'll that will just air count. Out. It'll That'll just be... air out the, the oven, warm up the kitchen. You know, it's a nice summer baking. day. We are, what are we doing? We are, we making, are making guacamole. And not just any guacamole. Let me let me up the ante here. Raise up the chorus. Launch all of the horses and everything because this is the guacamole recipe yes. of my family, mi familia. And this is mm. something that's been passed down. It's very, very special. And I am probably going to be hung for sharing this with you too. And to compliment yes. our spicy guacamole, we have a special wine from a local vineyard. This is Flying Leaps Habanero Chili Infused Wine. So we like to use habaneros in our guacamole. What better to complement guacamole than habanero chili infused wine? That was take 10. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh you can oh. smell the habanero. I'm gonna do something weird today. I'm gonna keep my ice in here, but I'm not gonna add schnapps. Shut the front door. Hey, buddy! You're just gonna do it, aren't you? We're just gonna have iced wine. Oh my gosh, the scandal of it all, everybody. Watch out, cork! <gasps> I got it in the container and that wasn't even on camera. God damn it. <laughs> Bacon! Why no? Dun da da da! You can actually smell that, the, the spiciness. Oh yeah, that is good. Everybody out there who's like, oh, spicy, I don't do spicy. It's not really spicy. No, no, no. It just gives it that little extra habanero flavor. Yeah. Which is what mm -hmm. we are shooting for today. today. Guacamole. Compared to other guacamoles, this is a bit of a complicated recipe. Uh, it is going to call for five avocados because if you're going to put in the kind of work to make this guacamole, better be a lot. It's gonna yeah. be a meal. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm. Right? Sorry. <laughs> so yeah. when we have our five, our five avocados, mm -hmm. we are going to add to this magical mixture recipe Bye. half of a yellow onion, half of a red onion, red onion, mm. half of, and this is important. An on the vine tomato. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to add three green onions or scallions, or is that what you call them? Yes, white people call these scallions. Scallions. Three of those. We are also going to be adding in three jalapenos. Ah. One hatch chili pepper or Anaheim chili pepper. Is it a whole one or a half a one? Half. Ah. Half <laughs> of a hatch or Anaheim chili pepper. Mm, I've been to Anaheim. Two habanero peppers. Thus the habanero wine, everybody. It all comes full circle eventually on this show. Two serrano peppers. Oh, I only got one. A serrano pepper. Ah, yeah. And the a handful, ingredient? and this, this is the thing that it throws everybody off. Really? This is a handful of shiitake mushrooms. Where, where do those even come from? Shiitake. All right, the rest will sort of be a surprise as we get there. Yes. Fine. Keep in mind, everybody. This, oh, this, I guess this it's a fruit. This, this recipe is just between you and us. Nobody else can know about this. This has to remain a secret, or I am, I'm, I'm gone. I, they are going to hang me up if they find out that I let this leak out to you guys. I know your cousin watches our YouTube video. Don't tell anybody. Baking wine up. And here we go! We're going to speed this up by splitting our duties in half. So I'm gonna be taking care of the avocados while Blunder here has <laughs> graciously offered to do all of the vegetable chopping. And I would dare say that the vegetable chopping is probably even the more important part of making this guacamole. Yes, that's why I'm doing it. No. You could totally <laughs> use a food processor oh. and you know, get everything mixed really, really sure, quick. For sure. But I argue mm. there, there is a fine line 
yeah. between pizzas that are cut too thick and too thick. Oh yeah, so you know, we actually did one of the times when, um, actually, you know, I, this was something you used to be making when we first started hanging out. I, all those really fun parties you used to do, you remember? Oh gosh. Oh yeah. my gosh, we get so drunk off of, you know, not just guacamole, not that you can get drunk off of that, but jungle juice. <laughs> anyway. Drunk off the guacamole. <laughs> it was that good, everybody. It would take forever to cut up stuff, you know, so I got, we got a food processor, remember? And it does make it a lot easier, but like, you know, Bungle said, it's so much better to just cut it up yourself because you can change the whole consistency you of your guacamole. Texture. You do. When you're biting into this guacamole, the texture is half of, of the joy that this guacamole brings to your mouth. So can you guys see this fun onion thing from the side? This is what I learned on the Cooking Network. I don't know if it was Rachel Ray, I'm looking at two different, but I don't know if it was Rachel Ray. I'm like swinging my knife. So it's not a threat, Rachel Ray. Mm. So you just cut the onions like this. You don't want to cut all the way through to the other side. Can you see this? La, 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 la. And see, and then you just cut it like this and then poof, you have perfectly Cut onions. I've made a few changes to the recipe mm -hmm. as I've worked on it, hence the mushrooms. <laughs> and why did we do that? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, there was an article that came out, uh, something about how great shiitake mushrooms were, and we were like, what can we possibly like incorporate into our diet to actually <laughs> eat some of these amazing superfoods called shiitake mushrooms. And we were sitting around brainstorming foods that would go well with it. And uh, guacamole came up and we were like, what if what? we put it in the guacamole? I don't know what the real health benefits of mushrooms are. I'm sure they're very good for you. I know they're good for your immune system, but... Like, I, I feel ill-prepared ill because I do know there's a lot of good benefits to shiitake mushrooms, mm -hmm. but I did not come in today we're prepared to talk about shiitake mushrooms. Ah, oh, we forgive him this one time, don't we everybody? Just the one. You know, this is, ready, come close. This is Blunder and Bungle. We don't prepare for this kind of stuff. You don't come here to actually watch us know what we're doing. We kind of wing it, we drink. He says as he's waving the knife. Oh, around. I'm so sorry. I just realized that too, and I'm like, please, everybody, be safe. Swish, 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 swish. I'm so, so here's oh, uh, so before good. before you start cutting the tomato. Yes. This is a, an important note to make about the consistency of your guacamole. You want to be careful when you're mixing your ingredients mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. mostly dry with ingredients that are very wet. So like tomatoes have a lot of juice in them. Very so juicy. if you are okay with your guacamole being a little juicy, then you're fine to cut it in and throw it in. But if you want to make sure your guacamole stays dry, then I would recommend actually cutting up the tomato last. So Bye -bye. that way the juice stays on your cutting board and not mix in with your other vegetables. Come close, come close. The more you know. <laughs> Once you have peeled and skinned, because that's different, Monster. Huh. Peeled and skinned your avocados. Yes. You are then going to use a basically a potato masher True. and just smash them into this great. Look how beautiful. Oh, come closer. Come close that. Oh. You want to get ripe avocados. Mm -hmm. And the riper they are, the easier this is going to be at this stage. If they're not exactly ripe, it's okay. They're still gonna taste delicious. You just gotta put in a little more effort in the mashing stage. Yeah. So this is this is where you get to just be like, you know what, I need no machines. Muscle, muscle, hustle, hustle, we can do this. I really, you guys, I really, 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 like really right now, I wanna take a sip of my wine, but I can't because my hand is covered in jalapeno. So this is actually the longest thing it takes to for me to cut. Like I can cut onions super fast. I can cut everything else super fast. It's always the jalapenos that take me forever to cut. Well, what was that? I don't know. Like I'm trying to be very careful. Oh, and here's a really good tip. Get your wine for this one. While cutting up very spicy foods like jalapenos and habaneros, while drinking your habanero wine, and you've got to use the loo, be very careful. Wash your hands because things will catch on fire if you're not careful. 
Cheers to oh, that! Yeah. So once your avocado mush has turned into a consistency about like this. Yeah. This is how you know. This is how you know that you're good to start adding other stuff into it. So this is five ripe avocados mm -hmm. all smashed and smushed into yeah. basically a paste. At this stage, if you're brave, you can taste it. <laughs> but it's a bit green. I was about to say, there's not a lot of flavor in it, is there? <laughs> not yet, but just wait. Now we get to the, the next Dang! secret ingredient that makes this guacamole stand out. You know, a lot of people in guacamole, you can put in sour cream, you can put in cottage cheese, give it sort of a basey flavor underneath the avocados. But around here, here, yes, we are going to put in some plain Ooh. Greek yogurt. Mm. For five avocados, you're gonna put in roughly three ounces. So a little more than half of one of these containers. Oh my God, I'm so afraid I'm gonna lose my finger. There we go. See that, be safe. Once again, make sure that if there's any condensational juiciness on top of your yogurt, that you drain all of that out if you don't want the guacamole to end up being juicy at the end. What also. do you call that? You always say that to me and I always get very confused. Suegro? Yeah. I'm like, you say that and I know what that means now, but when we first started making guacamole, I'd be like, what? Mix all of that Ooh, in. Ooh, Greek yogurt. No, it's very sour. It's very sour. <laughs> it's super healthy for you though, I would imagine. And just be really, really careful. It has to be the plain yogurt, not the vanilla yogurt. We have There's totally made that mistake big before. <laughs> big <laughs> we mean that. Yes. So when I'm cutting all these vegetables, I'm sure you guys have noticed, I kind of still like them a little chunky just because we do like a lot of thick consistency to the guacamole. Cause like, you know, Bungle said, it's basically a meal. Like you can just have this as dinner. You don't need to have it, you know, you have chips and you have this and it's fantastic. So the one vegetable shortcut that we do take, and you don't have to take this shortcut, you can totally add a couple of diced cloves of real garlic. Mm. But they sell these minced garlic cans in almost every supermarket. Heck yes, they do. And it's super, super easy to just take a couple scoops, get like two big scoops. Oh my God, that smells so good. Of minced garlic. I love garlic. I know people like to joke that I'm a vampire, but hell no, I'm not a vampire. I love garlic that drip right out and so you see I'm just getting two oh. two full scoops of minced garlic we're actually taking the wine drinking a little slow you know why because we must concentrate <laughs> because I'm holding a knife habanero everyone look how beautiful it goes with your wine look at that beautiful orange color oh, oh gorgeous just gorgeous the seasonings that we're going to need in here are onion powder yeah garlic powder Salt, yummy, black pepper, and parsley. Mmm. I never noticed you putting in parsley. Parsley is just a really good complement to uh, garlic and onion powder. Mmm. It's sort of just like by itself, parsley doesn't really have a whole lot of flavor to it, but it kind of brings out other flavors a bit better. We don't want this to be subtly flavored. Not we at all. We want everything in here to just pop. We want that explosion. So I don't have like a measurement per se mm -mm. for how much uh, garlic and onion powder I so use. Do you know what they say for that on cooking channels? What do they say? Add to taste. Add to taste. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my taste is usually a lot. Like if I had to estimate, <laughs> I, I would say somewhere between five or six full tablespoons of mm -hmm. is what I add mm -hmm. here. The way that I can tell that I've put enough Mm -hmm. is that I look at what I'm doing in here and I go, have I applied a coat of powder <laughs> across the entire top? Show them, show them, show them. It's look like at that. It's there. Gorgeous, it's just gorgeous. Coating mm. of powder Absolutely. across all of the avocado. So I make sure that it's got a nice good coat of the onion powder 
and then we do the same thing with the garlic powder. I usually do the garlic powder second because it's a little yellower and once you have the, the lighter tone of the onion powder on top, then it's really easy to tell where you're putting the garlic powder. Baking my nose! Sorry. I need a syrup. Like, I've been working really hard. The cutting of these vegetables is not easy, you guys. It's not easy at all. I'm gaining my muscles. Look at that. Oh, I'm actually going to burst out of this shirt. Oh my god. <laughs> I never thought it was so busty before. I guess I do take after my mother. Parsley, you don't need a lot of parsley. Literally just give it a couple little sprinkles, done. So I learned this also, this really cool trick with these tomatoes. So when you're cutting them, it's always good to like puncture it a little bit first and then go through it. Cause when you do that, it's so much easier. Cause sometimes if you just go down at it, it'll slip and the knife will slip and you'll totally cut your hands. You just like stab it. Just give it a little stab and then run your knife through it. I feel like we're talking about murdering people. This is very <laughs> bizarre, but that's how I cut my tomatoes. Now it doesn't work the other way around because I'm not that creative, but at least that looks pretty. Salt is very much an add to taste. Mm -hmm. Some people like a lot of salt. I like a lot of salt. And some people like very, very little amounts of salt. So this is really just going to be add salt until the end product. And, and you don't have to even add salt at this step. You can keep adding it at the end with everything and then just taste, take taste of it until you know that it tastes good to you. We just have low blood pressure. We don't, we're, we're not, we're rarely, rarely ever that stressed. <laughs> Look at what Blunder has done for us. Look at the beauty. The colors, the, you the guys, the colors. The colors. We have the chopped mushrooms. Oh, you're we welcome. All, it was a pleasure. All of our vegetables are ready to go. You know what I'm going to do with this? You know what I'm going to do with this? Show it up. Oh, that was, look at the, that was very satisfying. And this is what's gonna make it nice and chunky. There's enough. there's one yeah. more ingredient yes. that any any lover of guacamole is going to say is an absolute must. Absolutely. And that is on top of everything that we've already put in, we yeah. still need yeah. oh, the power of cheese. We are using a pepper jack ourselves, of but a cheddar Colby Jack is still going to be oh, yeah. delicious in the guacamole. Now remember, if you like what you're seeing so far, please like, subscribe, and comment below, you guys. Do you like a piece of cheese? Of course I like a piece of cheese. Mm. How much cheese is the right amount of cheese to put in this guacamole? Can I say more cheese? <laughs> as much as it fits. Oh, that sounded exciting. <laughs> like in all honesty, you probably want at least actually like three to four ounces. And, and that is just mm. going to give it a very cheesy kind of taste to it as well. It that just adds is, to the consistency of it really, doesn't it? I mean, everything mm -hmm. is better with cheese. So you're adding some cheese. Oh, look this at that. Is, oh, just sprinkle that in. This oh, is our yeah. four ounces oh, yeah. of pepper jack oh, yeah. cheese. Put in like low sexy music right here. <laughs> and then once again, <laughs> mix all together. We'll this get a little is, closer on. Yeah, this there. is going to be yeah. our final mixing, unless we need more salt. I know there's a lot of other recipes for guacamole out mm -hmm. there that's literally just avocados and red onions. Oh, and tomatoes. They always and put tomatoes. tomatoes. Yeah, a lot. It, sometimes too much. Because well, because yeah, you're right. It does make it real. I love that the cheese turns green. I think that's so hot. <laughs> I was like, I love it. Ah, oh, mm. another successful mix. Oh my gosh, this baking winos is really good. Baking winos. Bungle. Mm -hmm. How long is the guacamole supposed to cook for? Oh my gosh, you don't cook guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now it's time for. Look at that. Oh, almost lost that. But you want that. You want that consistency. Mm. 
forward like this, it's like a slow build for that spiciness. Do you, do you get it? It got, oh. And of course, if you're not a spicy mm. fan, you can mm. cut the amount of peppers in mm -hmm. half or less mm -hmm. and still mm -hmm. get mm -hmm. a very, very good guacamole. Absolutely. Mmm. Mmm. Grab your wine. Mmm. And that. Baking Winos! Ding! Thank you so much for joining us today and making our beautiful guacamole. <laughs> this is Chicken. heavy. I'm so sorry. I'm like, ugh, ugh. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Baking Winos. I'm Blender. I'm Bungle. And remember, yes. like, subscribe, comment, and give us some ideas Absolutely. on other things we should play, bake, make, destroy in the future. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.